I run an economic institute that looks at the economy of Silicon Valley, California, the Bay Area, a lot of technology companies involved, and we are asking the question, how should companies here in Silicon Valley and the US and anywhere outside of China understand the innovation process in China? Every country in the world is talking about innovation as the key to competition, the key to future growth. So what does this look like in a Chinese setting and how is it different from what we think of as innovation here? So I'll go through this pretty quickly. There's some pretty clear ideas. First, how are we def defining innovation? Well, you can have transformational innovation, largely research, scientific, technology-based, where you're really disrupting an existing industry, or you're creating a new one, often based on the technology. Or you can have incremental or business model innovation. And that's typically where you're taking an existing system or technology, and you're improving it, and you're adding value. So both are really good. Both are valid ways to innovate. Generally speaking, here in Silicon Valley, we're really good at transformational science-based innovation. Uh, China is catching up, but it's not as strong in that right now. But China is really, really good at incremental business model innovation. But that's a snapshot today. We think that if you look ahead four or five years, given the trajectory China has, China is going to be catching up on transformational innovation pretty fast. So what are the inputs? I won't dwell on each one of these, but if you look at government investment in scientific research in China, going up, not as high as ours, but going up. Scientific articles, the volume of scientific articles produced in China is going up dramatically. It's about the same number now as in the US. And one way of measuring the quality of those is are they peer reviewed? And the number of internationally peer reviewed scientific articles on technology coming out of China is going up too. Um, science and engineering talent. Again, arguably more stronger talent, things like AI here in the US and Silicon Valley, but this quality is coming up in China. Lots of people coming back from the Valley and elsewhere in the US to work in China, bringing that experience with them. And also a growing number of patents coming out of China, again, a test of the quality is, are they also patented internationally? A growing number of Chinese patents are now patented all around the world. So all this says uh, China coming up the scale very fast, maybe not at the level we are here yet, but coming up that scale. Uh, good example, AI research. These are articles that are published globally using the terminology deep learning that have been cited in other publications, again, a, a measure of quality you can see where the US and China lead. It's growing around the world, but the other countries don't compare with the volume of quality work coming out of two countries, uh, the US and China. Uh, how is this reflected commercially? Well, everybody in this room knows it. The best example is probably mobile commerce. About 40% of the mobile commerce in the world is happening right now in China. Mobile payments, uh, probably the most advanced in the world. Uh, WeChat, Alipay, uh, every business, even the tiniest, we know is connected to a smartphone. Not the case yet here in the US. So that scale, the scale of the China market, the amount of data being driven, uh, is driving investment in AI, which again is feeding growth in that technology. So market scale in China matters. Best example, mobile commerce. Uh, leading companies. So most Chinese companies, even if they're very well known and very large, are not ranked among the most in the innovative in the world. Uh, Huawei is the only one that really is top ranked, and people would agree on that. But boy, you look at the number of leading Chinese companies that have achieved massive scale, and you look across the industries, ICT, Huawei, all the internet companies, GD for automobiles, DJI for drones, there's no way to say they didn't get to that scale without being innovative. So you go to the other end of the process. Small companies, startups and venture capital. So China's home, and a lot of people in this room know this too, to a very robust startup scene. There's a lot of incubators. They're proliferating everywhere. You can even say there's too many. Uh, does Tianjin need 100? Does Suzhou need 300? I don't know. But there's a lot of them. You can't say the infrastructure isn't there. Corporate investment in startups is growing really, really fast. And if you look at the unicorns generated across Asia, 
Overwhelmingly, these are coming out of China. The number two country is India, but it's way, way uh, at a smaller scale. The biggest area for this investment is internet, and guess who the big players are? Baidu, Alibaba, JD.com, and, and Tencent. It, we'll, we'll see this pattern again and again. Uh, so if we look at the ecosystems here for innovation, Silicon Valley, China, it looks like in China, from our perspective at the Institute, uh, all the major ingredients for an innovative ecosystem are in place. You've got the universities, the engineers, lots of venture capital. China invested as much venture capital last year as we did here in the U.S., and a huge number of customers. Uh, but there are still some gaps. Again, lots of accelerators. That doesn't mean innovative things are happening inside those doors. We don't know, but it doesn't guarantee it. Uh, a lot of investors, venture investors in China, still tend to look to monetize their investments really fast, which means a lot of the startups do the same. Maybe not playing for the long-term transformative play where the real innovation happens. And again, Chinese universities are generally not ranked in the top universities globally for turning out VC-backed entrepreneurs. So that's changing, but there are still obviously some gaps in China to be filled. So we look at government policies. How do they come into play? And I won't talk about all of these, but there are a number of government policies when we in the US look at it and say, where is China going? Well, the policies are pretty clear government roadmap designed to build on indi indigenous innovation, require the transfer of technologies from foreign partners, put foreign partners' data on their servers, have secure and controllable internet uh, systems by the government, a variety of things that from the standpoint of a US company or a European or a Japanese or another company would say that creates an unlevel playing field for us. We're required to transfer our technology, which is fundamentally risking our own long-term competitiveness. That goes to these issues we we're talking about earlier about the tariff, the, the trade conflict potentially with the US and China. Those are some of the underlying issues that explain why the conflict is taking the form it is today. Uh, so China and the Bay Area, what's the footprint of China here? Well, China is looking to, for, as we read it, embed itself in all the major innovation systems across the world, but primarily here in Silicon Valley. So California is the number one destination in the US for investment coming from China. Um, most of the technology investment is, guess where? the Bay Area and Los Angeles, but especially the Bay Area. The largest field is ICT, but biotech is very much a part of that too. And most of that is coming from private Chinese investors, not state-owned enterprise, which really distinguishes us in California from the rest of the US. So we're, it's coming in two forms, really large funding, 500 million to a billion in some of our large tech companies. Um, Airbnb, Uber, Lyft, some big examples, but a lot of money coming into smaller companies, um, especially uh, smaller internet type companies here uh, through various kinds of venture arms. Uh, accelerators, a growing number of Chinese uh, sponsored accelerators here, some private, some provincial, uh, some public, private, or national. Um, more and more of our major accelerators here that are based in the Bay Area are opening up multiple locations all across China. So this, this is going in both directions now as entrepreneurs are being supported in, in both countries. Our entrepreneurs looking to be involved in China, Chinese entrepreneurs looking to connect here on a large scale. Lots of large Chinese companies with innovation centers here. Not unlike companies from all around the world, there's more than 45 large corporate uh, players from Europe with innovation centers here. So China is joining this group uh, of large corporations looking to be part of the innovation system here in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley. Uh, also, that's reflected in venture funds. You can see a lot of big venture funds from Silicon Valley are very active in China, but a growing number of Chinese venture funds are here in the Valley increasingly active uh, investing in this region. So, bottom line, we looked at the future. What do you, we think is going to happen next? Well, there are some limitations still, as I said at the beginning. Uh, China is still lagging Silicon Valley and the U.S. in some key technologies. There's lots of quantity. Doesn't necessarily mean there's always quality. And you could make a case, perhaps, 
that a very heavy directed hand by the government around what the priorities will be uh, may not be helpful to true innovation. And maybe limiting access to communication and information as happens, we know, in China. Maybe that impedes innovation. But on the other hand of the, of the coin, we see that China has succeeded in producing massively successive huge companies that are starting to go global. Uh, the best of them are intensely competitive in China and becoming so internationally. The scale of China's market is a huge advantage, and the startups, they're really hungry. They're just like startups here in many ways, and plenty of venture capital available to them. So where China isn't a leader in innovation today, it may be in the future. Uh, it probably will be. Uh, the question from a U.S. standpoint of looking at Chinese innovation is complicated by the role of the government because those policies I referred to really are, are much more directed than in any other country in the world, the industrial policy saying we want a leader dominate in certain key sectors and are going to put government resources behind it and we're going to either extract or buy technologies from foreign companies. And those are some of the issues that companies from here look at carefully and may be concerned about when they say, are we going to go to China? Are we going to invest in China? And we see some similar issues around Chinese investment coming here. And that's where this current trade debate uh, is a concern in Silicon Valley, because again, we get the lion's share of technology investment from China and the US. It's coming here. Uh, we may well be looking through Congress at more restrictions, uh, greater scrutiny of inbound Chinese investment, not just in big companies like semiconductor companies, but also in smaller startups doing things like AI. Uh, so all of this debate we're seeing in Washington, uh, some of it traces back to these issues of how innovation is supported and promoted in China. A lot of people feel it's not benefiting or it's to the disadvantage of foreign companies in China. And that's part of what the Trump administration and people in Congress are debating it at the moment. Uh, but we do think, you know, these are real issues. They need to be addressed. There needs to be a better communication about intentions between both sides. We need to have a, a, a clear understanding with each other and at the end, a deal on these issues. But it's important that the door remain open. There is a Silicon Valley perspective, which is a little different from the ch political perspective you get in China, rather in Washington, D.C., which is that it is really important that the U.S. door remain open, that we keep the, the flow of trade, especially the flow of investment, the flow of entrepreneurs back and forth, as open as it possibly can be, because we know both sides are betting, fitting from that. Entrepreneurs that Chinese accelerators and companies are investing in are having doors open for them in China, as they want to be more deeply involved in China. And of course, there's a lot of resources here that Chinese entrepreneurs benefit from. So we're saying every U.S. technology company, large or small, needs it either to be in China or it needs a global strategy that takes China into account. Uh, both sides benefit from this kind of an open door. Uh, business decisions, uh, rather government decisions, will have a lot of impact in the coming six or eight months on how business is conducted, how fast it grows. Hopefully it keeps growing between the U.S. and China, but we think that Silicon Valley, the kind of partnerships that happen among large companies, with small companies, accelerators, investors, incubators here in the Valley done well can be a model for whatever may be going on in Washington, how we continue to grow this really important relationship between the two largest economies, the two most technologically driven economies in the world. I think a lot of the future of the world economy will be based on that relationship and it's important for us here in the Valley to keep that door open. So with that, um, I hopefully haven't delayed your lunch too long. <laughs> but all of this, by the way, is online. Uh, we're a think tank, uh, the Bay Area Council Economic Institute. BayAreaEconomy.org is our website, really simple. We have a whole report. All the details are there. Uh, so uh, feel free to look it up or drop me an email. Thanks for listening.